I have said through the last 20 or more years that the Bible is not, and I repeat that, is not a book or books about a special chosen people, about a special religion or ideologies or beliefs or doctrines. No, it's not about that at all. It is a thesis about the temple, the house, the home, where the source, the power, in other words, the term we are used to call God lives. It's where God lives. God created you and me to live in. And so when we talk about God, with our religious ideologies, generally we project some old man out somewhere out in the universe. That's our general concept and idea. And by doing that, we always give it human traits. Always. That's, yes. that's, we do that. We, we, it doesn't have those. We have the traits. We've been empowered yes. with that sensual apparatus. And that is not bad. It is wonderful. Even though, for most of us, I'm talking about myself, it controls us. Yes. So the sensual apparatus has learned selectively how to control us, how to seduce us, how to, uh, how to take charge of our life. And it does that in many, many ways, many ways. And we sometimes, we don't recognize that. We're, we're oblivious to it for the most part. So this source that we have called God, we have made it a personality. I use person, it's him, his father, and it's not. Even though I am like anybody else, I use those terminologies. And uh, they are, they're, they're wrong expressions because, again, I'm trying to anthropomorphize this, this that I'm trying to get in touch with. But I'm always trying to get in touch with out there. The, th the, the conundrum is, and this is a conundrum, the conundrum is it is out there, but it's equally as much in here. Yeah. Yes. And so if I really want to know yes. it, I have to get in here. I've got to know in here. Yeah. It's in here. It's the well, source. It's a parent because the parent is always it's outside, you see. Mm -hmm. So the greatest machine or the greatest building or the greatest piece of equipment that exists is you. There is not another piece of equipment that exists that didn't come from you from humankind. We invented it. We built it. We created it. I don't care what it is. You know, a lot of people think that uh, aliens built the pyramid. No. We did. Humankind built those pyramids. They built them here on earth. I'm not excluding the fact that possibly there are such things as uh, aliens or visitors from other places. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, you know, I, I'm not trying to be an expert or anything on that kind of ideology. I know Annie and I went down there, oh, how long has it been now, four or five years ago, a long time ago, and what I saw was the most miraculous thing I've ever seen. It, it just blew my mind away. And uh, the, the, the construction of it is beyond description. You can't describe it. You can't, you can't go in the size of it and look at it and hear the resonance of it, uh, et cetera. It, you, you just can't. You can't. Explain yeah. it's being, but listen to this as magnificent as that structure is, we built it. We are more magnificent than that structure. Yes. Our human yeah. body is more magnificent than that human mm -hmm. structure. Yes. Our body is beyond finding out. We are yes. so, I mean, okay. just to try to just try to study your eyeball, oh, no. the intricacy mm -hmm. of how your eyeball works. Yeah. The intricacy of how we take all of that that we project out there and it ain't out there. It's right exactly. here in the yes. back of your head mm -hmm. where your eyeballs projected on the screen. Right there. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just, mm -hmm. it's crazy. It's really crazy. So the greatest machine is the human body. And that to me, if we can see that, that will even magnify this source more. Because we are the end product of that. We are, we are that, the pattern and the design yeah. of that source. To see this or even to think like this is almost impossible because of the way that we have been taught to view this phenomenal bit of literature that we call the Bible. We have been taught to read it as a history 
about a source that we call God slash Father who created the human race and then how, how it, God, Father, destroyed his human race. I mean, that, I mean, that is just, and almost, it used to, I, I mean, I just bought a hook, line, and it almost makes me mad now in, in, in a way inside to, to attribute something to the, the, the beauty, the source, the power, the love of this energy and to, and to think that uh, it created it to destroy it. It created it and got mad at it because it, it wouldn't do what it said. Ah, right. uh, you know, that just, that, that kind of gets me now. He created the human race and then how it destroyed its, it, its creation. Because of disobedience, because man disobeyed, man didn't disobey. There is no sin in the garden. Eve yeah. did not do something yes. wrong. Adam did not turn his back. Those yeah. are those are ridiculous stories. And if you read it, you, you don't even find it in there. But yeah, in our mind, yeah. it's in our mind. If you listen to your conversation, I try to listen to my conversation. I don't like it sometimes. But if you try to listen to your own conversation and just catch yourself when you do things, pray about things, or this. Catch your own self. Nobody can do that for you. I, I, I try to do it to myself. And I hear it in other people now because of, I'm trying to recognize it in myself. And uh, it's, it's pretty crazy sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, because of that, they disobeyed. He cursed it. He cursed his own creation. Until we can redeem this story. And that's my, that's my quest. I really feel that's one of the passions in my life. One of them, for sure. One of the passions in my life. It's maybe to redeem the first 12 chapters. If I don't ever do anything, I'd like to redeem the first 12 chapters of the book of Genesis. It is the foundation of everything that exists, the characters in it, the stories, the timelines, the dates, the lengths, everything in it is about you and me. There's nothing in the story that is about people who lived two or three, five, six thousand years ago. Nothing is totally a story about you and me. And it's learning how to see it through the eyes that the Spirit has given us to see with, which we are all learning that. So until we redeem this story to its original <coughs> purpose and take it back to its origin to get its content. The word content means meaning or significance. That's what that word means. Meaning or significance. It has tremendous meaning and it has tremendous significance. I'm talking just the first 12 chapters. There's more in the first 12 chapters that I know I could probably research in an entire lifetime if I lived to be 120 year old. You, you can just, you can need it and need it and need it and every time you need it, there's more that's in it. It just, it just phenomenal. So, till we redeem its content, we will not know we will not know its intent. And that's the important part. To know what is its intention. What was the source's intention for us. For this beautiful earth that has been yeah. given into our hands. We have been given the ability. And you know, if we do not, the thing about it is, uh, if we don't do with it as it's, we, we can destroy it. And that's not crazy yeah. that we could do that. So, till we redeem the, this, the, the plans, the intention, the aim, and the purpose, the meaning, and the design of the earth is totally in our grasp, in our hands, in our ability. So, uh, and when I'm, my prayer is we are, we are going to uh, do that. Yeah. You know, whether we do it in my lifetime, that's, that's he said, I'd like to see a lot more of it done in my lifetime, but... Uh, Okay. Everybody ready? Mm -hmm. All right. If you want to open your Bible to Genesis chapter 1. Now this says, uh, I'll just wait until everybody's ready for sure. <laughs>
Genesis in the first one, by the very first one. <laughs> yeah. First page. Turn it over. Okay, the, the first sentence in the in in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now let me say that to you in Hebrew. Barashit, bara Elohim, in et, et. That's an important word, et. I'm going to put it up here on the board, et. It's Ali. Tov, et. And actually, have you ever heard of someone say, I'm going to explain this to you from A to Z? Yes. That means I'm going to explain everything about it. Everything, I'm going to turn over every stone and we'll show you everything that there is in it. Very important little bit of word. It's, stuck, it's tucked right in there. But nobody reads it. Nobody don't even know it's there. Very few people know. You won't know it's there unless you know what these glyphs mean. This is the very first glyph in the Hebrew alphabet. This is the last glyph. So it would be like saying A to Z in English. What is he going to do? He's going to show you Barashit, Bara Elohim, Bara in et heaven. It ain't out there. It's the two levels of water. Shem, Mim, Yod, Mim. And he says, and in et, in other words, I'm going to show you everything that there is about heaven. I'm going to show you everything that there is about how water works. And if you start and you look at this with that concept, that idea, right here in Genesis chapter 1, the word water is mentioned more uh, over t well, 10 times. Just the word water is mentioned 10 times. Which gives it a part of the formulation of the Kabbalistic tree of life. The Kabbalistic tree of life, it looks like this. Talk about it quite a bit. That is, that is such a powerful, powerful glyph. That, that is this thick man that we are so common and familiar with in our groups and whatever, yeah. uh, you know, because we, we've looked at it so much over the last number of years. That's, that's the Kabbalistic tree of life. It's also, it's also you and me from the source, the Trinity source that we all come from. That's the same thing as this right here. This is the Trinity source that builds the Kabbalistic tree of life. And you can start right here with these lower seven. You can find the seven chakras. You can find the seven colors of the rainbow. You can find the seven golden candlesticks. You can find the seven eyes of God. You can find the seven churches. You can find the seven breastplates. You can find seven times you've been dipped in the river. You can find the seven. Do you realize there's over 20 times that seven's mentioned in the book of Revelations? Hmm. It's about, the book of Revelations is about you. We say it's a prophecy book. So what did we do? What did we mean when we said it? it's in the future? It ain't got nothing to do with the future. We think we're living in the future when it's coming to the end. Yeah. See, that's ridiculous. Yeah. There ain't nothing coming to the end. Yeah. Everything is continuing. Mm -hmm. Everything is put in this motion of, of eternity. I mean, it's, it, it just is. It's that way. Mm -hmm. And so when I read that, that in Hebrew, in et, that little phrase right there, et, I leave told, means everything, everything from A to Z in this term, heaven. Shem, mem, yod, mem. Water's above, water's below. And in et earth, everything in this eoretz, that's the Hebrew word for earth, eoretz. That's where the, the Lord comes from, the earth. Paul said it this way, I think it's 2 Corinthians, it is 2 Corinthians 4, let's see, hold your place right there and just quickly turn over there. I believe that's what it's at, 2 Corinthians, just hold your place right there, we're coming right back. I think it's 2 Corinthians 4. Corinthians 4, 7. Y'all see that? 
Second Corinthians four seven. Second Corinthians four seven. What does it say? It says we have what? This treasure. What kind of treasure do we have? What kind of treasure do we have? I, not where do we have it. Where do we have that treasure? We have the treasure in what? Earthen vessel. What is an earthen vessel? This is the earthen vessel. The Sabbath. Mm -hmm. The arrest. It comes from the arrest. It comes from the uh, yes. fire, earth, yes. air, and water. It comes from carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen. Those are all, they're all tucked away right here in Genesis 1. They're all there. Mm -hmm. And we have this treasure, this treasure, this godly treasure, this godly deposit. We are the depository that God has put itself into. Can you imagine that? You have a huge treasure within your being. We have yeah. this treasure yes. in earthen vessels, in the physical body. And yet we want to try to get rid of them. We want to try to destroy them. We want to try to take away a lot of the benefits rather than to see those benefits for what they are and redeem them. Rather than them to control me, I control them. They become my greatest asset. Yes. If I don't, if I don't, yes, they will destroy me. And they do and they have for the most part of our lives because we haven't known. We haven't, we haven't recognized. We have been told a lie, bought the lie, didn't even realize we had embraced the lie and tucked the lie away inside us. And repeat it all the time and don't even pay attention by making God human. And constantly thinking that God is human. God's not human. God is not a human. Sure. Got it. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, in, in the vessel that we are. Each one of us. Okay, back over to Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. The darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let, the, let there be light and, light. and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And He called the darkness night. The evening and the morning were the first. Were it caught. In other words, he merged them, and the word means together. It's a matter of marrying the water of the earth yeah. and the power of the Spirit in one unit. And that begins to be the main thesis, together. Let it become together. Marry it together so that it's one. All right. Let's see here. Let's, uh, let's go to Genesis 2.24. And uh, I had I had this on the other board, and I need to put it back on this board because this I think when I saw this, I, and I saw this, that's how I got this. I just saw it in my in my study. As I was just studying, and I saw that, and I thought, wow, okay, let me let me look at that and research that some more. When I saw this this Trinity, I have it on both sides of me. Yeah. When I saw that, and I realized that this. Trinity, this represents the now, the now, and this represents the past, or the mind, the mind's where I store the memory, and it's in my soul, that's where that's at, and your soul is yourself, I mean, you can... You know, if, if any of you have a concordance or if you have a way of looking these things up, just look it up and you'll see it's, it's not complicated. It's real simple. And the self comes this way. It comes like that. And it comes like that. Your little self is your big self and your big self is your little self. It just depends on what you want to do with it. It, it just is. I mean, that's how, that's how it is. That's just how it's used. And you can, you can say that that, that nachesh, that's the Hebrew word for it, and, you know, I showed you this morning, it has the value of seven. So it's referring to you. That's, that's what it's designed for. The soul is designed for you. The soul is emotional. The soul is experiential. The soul seeks the intellect. The reason it does, I'll show you that in just a few minutes. The reason the soul seeks the intellect, it wants to know. And it's only in knowing. And what you do in knowing is you become, you increase your intellect. Or in knowledge. That's what knowledge is. That's what that's that's the person. So this is the past. Okay? 
and this is the future. And if you look at this and you're thinking with me, here's what you have. You have timelessness. You have timelessness. And you have it in time. Because the past and the future represents time. That's where you are. That's where you're supposed to be. Actually, that's where you're designed to be. Your body is not designed to live out yonder somewhere. It won't, and it can't. Your body is designed to live right here, and everything that your body, your body's divine. It is the most phenomenal divine design that ever existed. We have abused it. We have used it. We have ignored it. We've done all kinds of stuff with it. And we constantly do. We don't recognize and we don't realize how marvelous we really are. How wonderful we really are. So, timelessness chose of itself to move itself into time but not be stuck in it. Because God's always in your... He's right now. God, it, it's now. It is right now. It was a while ago. Yes, it will be in a few minutes. But it's right now in this progression, in this process. And what religion did to us is they took time and they made it evil. And they said, because you're in time. I've even heard a preacher talk about how that Adam and Eve, in time is what created this evil on this earth. And we'll get rid of it. We'll destroy it. Destroy the earth. They even... They even, I remember years and years ago, had a teaching how God's going to come back and literally burn the earth up. And they based that off the fact that to start with, he destroyed it with water. Next time, he's going to destroy it with fire. That was the, the failure of that whole ideology was the fact that God created the earth out of water. The earth is a vessel of water. And he filled it with fire to purge it, to burn it, to, to purify it. Matter of fact, the, the Greek word, uh, hold your place. Where are we at now? <laughs> I forgot what I know. 224. 224. Yeah. Hold your hold your finger right there, 224, and go to Revelations. I am gonna one day I talked about getting on the book of Revelation. It, it's such a phenomenal book. And it filled with so much phenomenal stuff. 20, Revelation chapter 20. And the devil that deceived them. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can look at this. And I, you know, I've, I've taught on many different ways that the devil, the diabolos, uh, it, it comes from a Greek. There is a Greek phrase that that existed in Greek mythology a little over 2,000, 2,500 years ago. And the Greek phrase was, Dues demon inversa. You hear that? That was the Greek phrase. Dues demon inversa. Can you, can you even guess at what that possibly means? It, the, dues means your double. Dus, your double. Is your demon in reverse. Inverse. So the mirror that you see of yourself is your devil. Yeah. It ain't something outside you. You project it yourself. That's right. Any way you want to project it. You can project it and call it. Give it any name you want to. <laughs> that, that's your choice. Call it whatever you'd like. But now listen to what this passage... This is mythology, folks. This is not meant to be a prophetic book. This is mythology. These are ancient stories that are compiled in different ways when you can see the content you will realize the intent hmm. and the devil that deceived them I could say it this way it says it this way the devil that deceived the whole nation in other words it deceived all the people yeah. that's, that's you and me we're our own deceiver yeah. <laughs> we can blame it on anybody it's that preacher I heard him preach that stuff and believed it <laughs> The sea of them was cast into the lake. The word lake is la me in Greek. Greek, the word la me means safe place. La me, it means safe place. 
It's used in Acts 27 when Paul took a ship out of a storm and he took it to a safe harbor. Same identical word, lami. That's what that word lake is, lami. Safe place. Notice what it says now. It cast them into the lakes, safe place of fire. The word fire is pur, P-U-R in Greek. It's where we get our English word pure, P. U R E. And so what did what's happening right here? It sounds like you and I were cast into a place of fire that began to purify us. That's what I was talking about this morning when I'm talking about the fire of the Spirit yeah. has been cast into water matter. This is water, this is fire. They merge together and God said, make the two one. That's, that's the story all the way through. How is that done? It's done by purifying. It's done by fire. It's done by reflection. So that I can begin to see. I start my, yes. my thing that I want to see is to see myself clearer. Okay, go back over where we were. 224. We were just approaching that. We squeezed this this morning a pretty good bit. So, so I, I want you to see this time and timeless, how they're married. They're merged together. God is in here. God is here, folks. God, God's not out there somewhere. Yes, God is out there because God feels all and in all. But we've got to bring it from out there in our, in our consciousness, in our conscious mentality. If our consciousness constantly projects it out there, I'm not going to take advantage of it in here. I've got to have it in here. It's in here where it will really benefit yeah. me. I recognize it's the source in me. That's the power of me. And it's that that I need to draw. And it's that I need. I'm not leaning on me. I'm not leaning on myself. Big or small. Period. I want to train it. I want to teach it. I want to educate it. I want to get it out of its childish ways. I do. I see that. And if I don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. Yeah. I mean, nobody will do it for me. So the past and the future, we're in it. We're right in the middle of it. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. From my, and I, you know, memory is a gift. It's not a, it's not a horrible thing. But when you have bad things happen to them, you store them in your memory, and you allow them to, to, to steer your ship. That's no good, because past memories that hurt you will take you in places that won't fulfill you. It's just that way. And so what you're going to do about that? If you are, it's your body, it's your ship. You're going to do with it whatever you want to. You can either take those past memories that have been hurtful or painful or, or you block them or whatever we do because we do a lot of different things with it. Take them. Bring them into your reality. Hold them. Love them. Forgive them. Tell them that it's okay. That, yeah. that whatever. That it's going to serve a greater purpose than its intention was. Its intention was to hurt me and tear me down. But it's not going to do that. It's going to build me up and make me stronger. I'm going to increase, I'm going to increase my being in love. And so I can do that with the past. Hallelujah. And what does that do? I'm going, to, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to do it in this moment, this eternal moment. Praise God right now. Because this is where the power of the Spirit is at to do that kind of transition. Mm. And what's that going to do? It's going to change the next step I take into the future. So, this, this passage uh, in verse 24 uh, actually, I just wanted to really work at the word one. It caught, you know, I talked about it this morning. It caught, it means to be together to make one. Mm -hmm. It means to make the two one. Mm -hmm. Marry them, merge them. Let them become as one. Mm -hmm. And if we can realize that's, that's talking about my, uh, my spirit and my soul. Mm -hmm. Spirit and soul are not synonyms. They uh, you know, I challenge, go sometime and just do a really good research on spirit and soul. You, you see that they're not even used together, but they are put together. Why? Because they're a design for this place. So spirit is designed. You know, even though that we say God is spirit, well, you are spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So right. And you are God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, no. You are. And you have a soul. You are soul. It's like Paul said in, in uh, or the 
attributed Paul to say that that's not only spirit, soul, and body. Mm -hmm. All you know, let's make the triune, make your make yeah. your trinity into one. So that Hebrew word ikad, and when you when you spell the Hebrew word ikad, I, I'll do it real quickly. I don't know if we did it this morning. It's the alif, which has a one value, and the cheat, which the the cheat is the symbol for e eternity, infinity. Hmm. I mean, that's where this is where we get that the infinity yeah. sign. The infinity sign is the eight yeah. laid down. That's all it is, and so that that's what that means is taking it to infinity. In other words, this just perpetuates and perpetuates. It, there's not an end to it. There, it doesn't have any end at all whatsoever. And then this little glyph right here is Dalit and it has a four value. So when you total these together, you have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. You have 13, which gives you the value of 4. And when you get the value of four, you have to pay attention because the value of four always will take you back to this character right here. I'll put it, I'll put it up here and you, you'll tell me what it is. J-H-V-H. Who is that character? Jehovah. That character is Jehovah. Who is Jehovah? Now, boy, religion has done us a really good job on that one. They, they think... They think Jesus is Jehovah. Well, yeah. in some truths, that's, that's correct if you realize you are Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jehovah comes from these four Hebrew glyphs, yod heh vav -He, which represent fire, earth, air, and water, mm -hmm. which also represents carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. They represent the gases. They represent the material that everything, everything in this earth dimension is made from. That's what they represent. So when it's talking about this word, ikad, make it one, it's talking about making everything that's in this earth, soul and spirit, make it one. Merge it together so that it becomes one function, one purpose, one design, doing one thing. Mm -hmm. All right, go back with me to Genesis chapter 3. Tell you what, before before we read that verse in chapter three, look at Genesis two seven. Just you're just right there on the same page before we read that in, in verse three. Genesis chapter two seven. Okay. And the Lord God formed that word's form squeezed out. That's the work of the process in the of the uh, fetus in the womb of the of the mother. Formed man of the dust of the ground. That dust, that word dust actually is a far. In Hebrew, far it actually means particles of light. Mm -hmm. Light particles that are material, that have become the part of the materiality. Uh, the dust of the ground and breathed. You see, the thing about the physical structure in time, for it to be in time, and to extract everything time can offer it, it has to be breathed. Yes. If it ain't breathed, it ain't gonna be here. But just a well, it'll just be here as a cadaver for just a few days, and then it'll, it'll, everything here will it'll go right back to everything come from. It just it'll just decompose itself right out there in the backyard or in the field. It'll rot. Every bit of it go right back to what it what it was. It totally decompose. Unless it's breathed, and if it's breathed, as long as it's breathed, it will be here. Isn't that something? Isn't that phenomenal? So as long as you keep breathing, you're going to keep hanging around. That's a real incentive right there. Hang on. Just keep her going. What's the Hebrew word for the Lord God there, which is the Lord God planning? Jehovah Elohim. Jehovah Elohim. In other words, the Elohim are the, the powers, the powers that be, merge themselves into the four gases or the things of the earth, the yod heh vav heh earth, fire, air, and water, carbon, mm -hmm. hydrogen, 
merge itself into that. That's what, that, that's what those two words together, Lord God. When you see that, Lord God, it's always referring to the power of the Elohim, the timeless one, pouring itself into the time for its creative ability. Mm -hmm. Lord God means that. Mm -hmm. That's why I put the Jehovah up here, because it is the Lord. Yeah. And the Elohim up here, because it, it is the eternal now. And, it, and you know, it's not used until you come to two, two fours. The first, pl first place you start to see that term used. Not used at all in Genesis 1. It's used at the end of the, of the seventh, of the seventh uh, yom, the seventh aspect of creation. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and at the crown and glory, the seventh aspect of creation, you find the Lord God. That's where God has completed the merging of this whole process, put it together to make it one. And he breathed it, then, then. And you realize the breathing doesn't happen until the house is completely built. You're not breathing in your mama's womb. You're getting breath through your mama's blood. Mm, yeah. But you ain't breathing. You're not exercising your lungs in your mama's womb. You're being created and built. That don't happen until you push out. <coughs> and you know, science today, you know, you can Google it. You can go on and, and see some beautiful, beautiful things about a baby being built in the womb and then about it being extracted from the womb. And when it comes, even when it's coming through the canal, through that birth canal, the things that it takes in from its mother through its mouth is phenomenal. It took 25,000 genes to build the womb. On its way out, it picks up hundreds of thousands more genes. Mm -hmm. Just coming through the canal, just getting all of that, mm -hmm. <coughs> all of the juices that's produced there by the mother. Mm -hmm. Dick Back Chopra has one of the most profound teachings <coughs> on that I've ever seen. And then you can see, like I said, you can Google it and you can see it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. There ain't nothing about anybody a mistake. Mm -hmm. no. I don't care if your mom yeah. was raped. I don't care how you got here. You yeah. all, we all got here the same way. We come yeah. through that tonight. We yes. come through the valley of the shadow of death. I don't mm -hmm. care who you are or what happened. You, you got here that way. Even if you were C-section child. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes C-section child, there are certain things that they grow into because they're going to get the bacteria just being exposed to this dimension. But the ones who come through the canal... They pick up so much just coming through that canal. And then when they get out that canal, what do they do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I made it. I'm through. I got here. Thank God. <clears throat> right? I mean, that, I mean, that's the most phenomenal thing that could possibly be. Anybody's ever seen. Yes. I actually got to see. Yeah. I actually did get to see six of my grandkids be born. Now, isn't that crazy? I saw six of my grandkids. And back then... When Connie and I was having kids, and I know it was that way, when yeah. uh, Annie uh, had Nancy, mm -hmm. they wouldn't even let the daddy back there. They wouldn't let nobody back there. And then whenever it was born, they made me wrap up all this stuff before I could even handle it. It is the most natural thing that you could possibly be. Yeah. And Rochelle, my oldest daughter, she wanted to get into midwifery at one time in her nursing career. Maybe that's why she had five kids just popping them out. You know, but anyway, she just loved loved that loved babies and loved to be in that atmosphere of that new life coming in there uh, because it's so miraculous. I mean, it is so miraculous. So I saw my I saw my grandson Christian born, and the minute the minute he was born, he had a deformed heart. I, I could tell that he was black. He was, he was dark or purple, mm -hmm. and they didn't even. They, I mean, they didn't spend they what twenty seconds wrapped him up, nipped that cord that took off with him. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know that. The doctor didn't know that. But they knew what they had when he was born. His heart was deformed. Mm -hmm. The heart didn't form correctly in the uh, birthing, in the uh, mm -hmm. process of being, of being grown in the womb. Mm -hmm. So they immediately rushed him, airlifted him from uh, Dalton Hamilton Hospital to Vanderbilt Hospital in Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, of course, we all had to get in the car and 
I, and I was there almost quick so I got a helicopter, so <laughs> I flew too. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even see it, didn't even see a stack truck. Run 120 mile an hour up I-24. I know that little number. Yeah. But anyway, uh, they got him up there and uh, they actually run a uh, some kind of a thing up into his heart and and ripped a hole, a egg, a hole in where it would leak blood. They said the leakage of the blood would help him get oxygen to give him a three or four day window to live longer. Otherwise, he'd be dead in five days. So this has been 26 years ago. So they did that, and uh, I think he was three days old. They did open heart surgery, mm -hmm. corrected that. Like I said, he's 26 year old today. Wild as a, I was when I was 26. <laughs> 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 Healthy and strong, but he has to go back every year. And he saw another yeah. day in one of these. He has to go every year and get all strapped up and check his heart and all that because uh, he, actually some of the projections they said they'd have to do on him. They'd have to go in and stretch his heart valves and this, that, and other, and maybe even replace them by the time he's as old as he is now. They had to do nothing. Hallelujah. I mean, Praise he's God. strong, he's healthy, good-looking man. Just That's so wonderful. the miracle power of prayer, mm -hmm. yes, and the power of That's of the spirit, the power of the spirit, and the power. Listen, it also the power of the human body to heal itself. Yes, right. you have to give it credit. It, it, yes. It's not because they prayed the right prayer in Jesus' name. It's not because they ate all the right foods. It's not because they did any of the right things. It's that energy that's in me. I'm going to do this. I'm going to live through this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Be quiet because we have that power in this earthen vessel. In this water vessel, we have that power. But we can destroy ourselves with that power. Yeah, if we don't balance that power with the power of the Spirit, this Spirit, this soul, has to be balanced on this center column. Yeah. In, in, in all philosophy, even... In, this is the path. Jesus says, take the middle way. The Tao uh, Te Ching is always take the middle path. The, the middle path, the straight path, that's the path of the Spirit. That's the path of God. That's the path of the Source. That's always down. It's passing by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. More about the dust of the huh? And God see it. it is good. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. That's how God saw it all. Yeah. He never seen anything wasn't good. That's right. Isn't that amazing? You'll find it in which God saw it. Uh oh, that don't look good. <laughs> hey, that ain't there. Everyone God said, hmm, that's good. You know, it's sort of like the source of the universe stood back to it. Well, I did a pretty good job right there. Look at that. <laughs> Well, you know, it looks like a chip off the old block. <laughs> and, yeah. And what I call good, don't you call otherwise. Amen. That's exactly right. And we and we have, haven't we? That's we do right. all kinds of things with it. Right. We call them corrupt and evil, yeah. wicked. Well, I have. I'm just talking about me. I, you know. So, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Breathe. You have to be breathed. That's so, you know. And breathing is such an important thing in so many so many uh, traditions, whether it even be Hebrew or Eastern traditions or any of the traditions, yeah. teach breathing methods, how to learn to breathe, how to breathe, how to take deep breaths, how to hold those breaths, how to release those. There's so many different methods. I don't think there's any one method that's the best method. You have to find your method and then practice it, work on it, hone it. I mean, I have certain methods that I use, not just one. I have several methods that I use that really build me up and get it charge me up and I realize that they're doing that to me and I think that many times it's in those breathing methods that I open the pineal gland. Sad to say because we don't do any of these practices. We don't <clears throat> we don't breathe right. We don't take breathing exercises. We don't we don't drink right. We don't drink pure water. Today I, I, you know I Annie and I were talking I think just the other day or a week or two weeks ago about how that Today, the young people drink these energy drinks. They drink all yeah, kinds of garbage. They drink that. sodas and all that, all that crap. Hardly ever drink any water. I pray to God that they're not creating an early Alzheimer's because the brain is just about all water. And, it, and if it's all water, it thrives on water, needs it. 
and we all we put in our body is energy drinks or or whatever else that you put in your body. Uh, what are we doing to ourselves? What are we doing to our brain? What are we doing to our ability uh, to run this physical machine that's so marvelous and wonderful? I pray that those those young people they will get a revelation of this. That will yeah. uh, as we. And he so powerfully last night talking that we got to we got to look after a brother. Mm -hmm. I mean, dear God, if you didn't get much out of it last night, get that out of it. Got to. Yeah. I, I mean, that should be a passion and a fire in our life. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, 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 we can wake up, we can say, "Oh God, this is so wonderful," and be selfish. We never share it. I I don't get that myself. I don't get that. I, you got something really good. I like to share it. You know. Uh, life depends on. Yeah. Except for the cookies I got hit back there. <laughs> uh, breathe, breathe, breathe the breath of life. And man became a living soul. He became a soul alive. Hallelujah. He became a self. He became a mind. Now, go with me to Genesis chapter 3. We'll just take her off or maybe unhook here or whatever. And, uh, Genesis chapter 3. Verse 5. Verse 5. Genesis 3, 5. Y'all got it? Okay. For God doth no. Everybody said that's Elohim. That's the source. That's the power. That's the eternal. That's the that's it, that's not the term. I know we even I have taught it over and over uh, that the Father. But I don't want you to see some kind of a humanoid figure. Mm -hmm. This is not a human figure. Yeah. But this figure is 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 all intellect. It doth know. That word know right there. In the Hebrew, let's see, I think I put that word up here. And that word, no, is this. And I put it here on the board. That God doth, God doth know. It's Yod, Dalit, Ayin. This is a 70, this is a 4, and this is a 10. And this, this is called Yada, Y-A-B-A, -A, Yada. God does know Yada. And the word actually means to have intellect. In other words, it, the power of knowing comes from your intellect. It means intellect. It means the power of knowing. It means perception or the ability to perceive. Well, you don't think God wants to keep that for himself, do you? Mm. I mean, we'd be a fool to think he does. Yeah. And he doesn't. God poured that right there into you. Because that, and get, look at the value of this 70, 84. So it's 84, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So 84 is what? 84 is what? 12. And 12 is what? 3. 3. Trinity. That's the value of that. That's what it's referring to. God doth know. The intellect. That ability of knowing. That ability of perceiving. And God has given you and me. Now look at this. This, this represents eternal. Eternity. Mm -hmm. Even though neither of those words are found in Scripture. It's amazing. It, we, have, we use those words so frequently. They're not even found in Scripture. Eternal or eternity. But now they are used in the different glyphs. Just like that glyph right there. Check out. Number eight. That, that's the meaning of that of that glyph, eternity, perpetual. That's just it. I mean, it, there's no end to it. It's just over and over and over and over and over. So God does know. And look what it says that God does know. God does know that in the day that you eat. That you eat. God knows that in the day that you eat, mm -hmm. that you eat, what happens? That you eat. What happens if you eat? Your eyes. You get your eyes opened up. 
Well, my God, you won't live your entire life with your eyes closed. That's, that's how we have. We've been living for thousands of years with our eyes closed. You know why? Because we thought, oh, my God, if I eat from the tree of knowledge, intellect, I'm going to become wicked and the devil's going to take me over. I'm going to live over here in the evil part of the earth. That is dumb. But that's what we bought hook, line, and seed. But God does know. God does know that when you eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then your eyes will be open and you will be as. Who? Who are you going to be like? You're going to be just exactly like a creator. Now, can you tell me what's evil and wrong with that? When you open your eyes, when you begin to partake of the intellect that God is, you begin to draw that into you so that you know instead of guess, instead of hit and miss, I mean, that's a whole lot higher than an emotion. The emotion is over here in the soul. It ain't nothing wrong with them. I'm not putting them down at all. I, I, I enjoy them. Thank God for them. I, I love the feelings that I, that I have. Some of them I don't like. <laughs> most of them I like. Most of them, most of them I love. I mean, God's given me this here in this place that we call time. I want to read you a couple things, something I wrote in this book. And I want you just to listen to it, and I'm going to close with this. It said, uh, the disadvantageous disadvant contrast of time with eternity. This is, this is what stems in our thinking from this, this contrast of time, of time, that, this is time right here, with eternity. This is what religion has done to us. This is what religion is done to. I'm trying to, I'm trying to redeem it from its original intent. So if, if I can get this content right, I will understand the intention of time and timelessness and the merging of the two together. Because they are together. They're not apart. You, you ain't going to be here if the timeless one left you. <laughs> you ain't going to be here. I'm just, I'm just telling you. We will all be walking down there looking at you and say, wow, well, don't they look natural? <laughs> yeah, peaceful. <laughs> they look so peaceful. <laughs> Ain't mad at nobody now. Look at them. <laughs> it all stems from a disadvantage, disadvantage, advantageous contrast of time with eternity. Eternity was re has received the accolade of good and glory. Now you sit there and think about that. Because I know good and well, I heard y'all sing them old songs. Won't it be wonderful there? No, our burdens to share. I heard y'all sing them songs. When y'all walk over there and you get to the streets of glory, you go to your mansion, God's got built for you, you go see mama over there, over there, over there. We're all guilty. The most songs live in deep in us. Mm -hmm. I mean, dear Lord, there's some of them just, just resonate deep in me. Love them. <laughs> uh, that one that I'm thinking about, about that guy that wrote it when his wife and his children died out there in the middle of the ocean. He told the captain to tell him when he got there and uh, about troubling his soul. How does that go? Oh, God, that's good. All is well. All is well with my boy. Now, that's not a part of the spiritual way. When peace like a river attendeth my soul, and the sea that I was Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. That's a deep, it is well, it is well. That's a deep song. Yes, it is. <laughs> Eternity has received the accolade of good and glory. Time is stamped with the mark of evil. It is a warped theological systematology. 
the subjection of a divine unit of life to the stress and illusion of time <laughs> since is to demon and defame it. Time is the enemy of eternity as matter is that of spirit. Obliterate time and catapult yourself straightway into supernatural timelessness is the blatant cry of childish, impatient, and ignorance. And I say seal it at that big time. Simply because one of the things that needs to be redeemed is the fact that eternity deposited itself in time. Or time would not be there. Yes. Time is holy. Yes. Mm -hmm. As you are holy. Time is a parenthesis in eternity. Amen. Right in, right in eternity. Yeah. And then I wrote this. The only place to true peace, true freedom, and true happiness is within the holy of holies of your own heart. Placing your power outside your being is to build an idol that can really do nothing for you. Religion has deceived us for hundreds, even thousands of years by putting time out of our focus and out of heaven and God our Savior somewhere out there. Somewhere in eternity outside of time. Yet, to use the characters and the stories and the allegories, the myths, as stepping stones, as a ladder, as a, a tool for me to climb higher out of my miry clay. As stepping stones, as ladders, to lift oneself, the soul, the eye, yeah. the inner person. Into that that has always been prepared for us is to grow up into the head, into the maturity, into the and to free ourselves from the attachments which are leeches of, that we get living life in this earth. Mm -hmm. I end with this story. I end with this story. When I was a little boy we grew up on my grandfather's farm and in, uh, in the summer, we get through working out in the fields and big river running around the, the bottom lands, huge uh, fields in the bottom lands, and uh, water's cover that field. And it was a really good, rich soil growing. But that river just run beautiful, clear. We drank the water out of it when I was a little boy. But we go in there playing in that river, and we get out. And when we get out, we would have leeches on us. They'd get on us while we're playing in the river. We didn't even know they was on us. And sometimes you can put your clothes back on and they could be up here somewhere. You know? Uh, and you didn't know it. And you get home and take your clothes off and boom, there's one of them leeches to you. Just sucking the blood out of you. Mm -hmm. Those are leeches. We accumulate those leeches living life here. It's not wrong. And in some cases, you know, now I think any, and I will talk about some places now, they are practicing that as a form of healing. Using leeches yeah. to pull that out. But we get attachments. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I have attachments that I would like to get rid of sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes they're they're hid in inconspicuous places. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't even recognize them there. I got them. I got them moving through this journey. Why? Because this is a water journey. Mm -hmm. This water journey is filled with all kinds of ups and downs, hills and valleys. Attachments. Yeah. Many of those attachments don't serve me. In fact, that's probably right. none of them serve me. And to free myself from them, that's a personal yeah. thing I need to do. That's a personal thing I do. That's a personal thing that you and I do to free ourselves yeah. from the leeches yeah. that we picked up just through the living life here yeah. in this marvelous dimension. So, oh, have, have, hallelujah. Happy yeah. trails to you. Yeah. Till we meet again. Yeah. <laughs> you say that. You say yeah. that. Do, do you uh, mean that we are in the fourth dimension? We're in the water bearers. Yes. 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 
Yes, we are in the Aquarian age, and yes, there is a book. I have the book. I actually, it's got it back there. I quoted from it last year, Sunday church called The Fourth Dimension of Water. See, that, up until this scientist, this book was written in 2012, up until this scientist wrote this book, they recognized water with three dimensions. Solid, liquid, and gas. That's all the dimensions. This guy, uh-uh, there's another dimension. It's the divine dimension. Mm -hmm. And again, coming back to this very thing, this thing has been eating at me this whole year. That's right. Starting the first year, I, I, we are water vessels. We are in the Aquarian age. And as yes, water vessels, we are. we are affected by everything around us, for good yes. or not good. Yeah. But we are affected. And not only that, in the water is all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Leeches. Yeah. Nourishment. Yes. Poison, all kinds of stuff is in the water. And God created it that way. It's not good, bad, right, wrong. God created the water. That's right. that it's created. This place is a cesspool of creativity. The earth is. It is just mm -hmm. constantly teeming, just working to create something. And it's doing it. Amen.